This is a you asked, I answered video in response to a question how do you calculate the distance a band has moved if my agro gel is on a PDF which was a comment I received on the video how to calculate the size of a DNA band on a gel. There is a link through to the video in the description below. So how do we go about doing this type of calculation? This is a common question I've received over the years and it's because people get a little bit confused about what size the gel has to be to do this. Does it have to be the size of the original? Can you make it larger? Can it be smaller? And if it's on a PDF, clearly you want to print it out or use a computer program to do the measurements. The size of the gel, as we will see, doesn't really matter in this case. So this is the gel that I use in the original video and it's got six lanes in it and in lane one are the base pair size, the DNA ladder. And what we need to know is the size of this unknown band. That's what we're trying to calculate. So what we do, as I explained in the other video, is we create a table, we note down the base pair sizes and then we work out the log of those base pair sizes. Next, we do the measurements. We measure how far each band has moved from the well. So the first band has moved 22 millimeters on this size of image. And we do that for the rest. We measure each one and we get these values with the unknown band moving 58 millimeters. So that's our gel. Now, what if the gel was half the size, which it is here. I've just shrunk it down to 50% of the original size. 22 millimeters clearly doesn't work at this size because the gel is now smaller. In fact, the distance is now 11 millimeters. So what do we do in this particular case? And does it make a difference to our final answer? Well, if we take that gel and we do, as we did with a slightly larger version of it, We've got our base pairs, we've got our logs, and we've got our distances. And these are the distances that the bands had moved on that larger gel. And when we measure the distances on the smaller gel, that first band has moved 11 millimeters, and the rest 14, 15, 19, and so on. With the unknown, which had originally moved 58 millimeters, now having moved 29 millimeters. Now, if we take the original data from that larger gel where we had the 22 millimeter band and plot a graph of it, we should get something that looks like this. We put the log base pairs along the bottom because that's the thing that we know. We know the base pair sizes of the bands. We know the log values and we put the distance up the side. If we take our 58 and put a line across and then drop it down, what we get is a value of around about 3.35 and that's the log value. We can then convert that 3.35 log value to its anti-log so that's 10 to the power of 3.35 and in doing that we get the size in base pairs of that unknown band. Alternatively we can put the data into Excel and get Excel to calculate our gradient and our intercept on the y-axis and when we do that we find our gradient is minus 44.1814 and our intercept is 206.0865 now initially you might think, hang on, there's something wrong here. It appears to be intercepting around about 110, 120, somewhere in that region. But don't forget, the bottom axis there, the x-axis, is starting at 2. So we're not seeing it over at 0. So don't get alarmed by that. If we look at the correlation, we've got a correlation of minus 0.9994, which is good. So it's a good fit. And then we can put in our unknown, 58, so we're just using the y equals mx plus c equation. We can put our figures into that, and we come up with a log of 3.3518, and when we anti-log that, we get a value of 2,248 base pairs. So we would say that the band is 2,200 base pairs, because this approach isn't amazingly accurate. It's an approximation that we're getting from this type of calculation. And so if we go back and look at our original gel and we look at our unknown, we can see that that value of about 2,200 is about right because our unknown is just above the 2,000 and has not quite reached the 3,000. So we can be confident that that value is right. So what about when we have that smaller gel where the distance wasn't 22 millimeters but was 11? Again, we can plot the data. Here's our graph paper. Note that the top now is 60 and not 105, 110 that we saw on the earlier graph because the values are now smaller. 
So if we plot our data, we get a line that looks remarkably similar to the original line that we have. So if we compare the two, you can see we've got from 110 on one, 60 on the other, and the lines look very, very similar indeed. Of course, the log base pairs haven't changed along the bottom because we haven't changed the size of the DNA bands in the DNA ladder. So those are the same. All that's changed is the distance that has traveled by those bands. So what about the graph details in this case? Well, for the first graph, the larger version of the gel, we had these values that we calculated. And if we run the calculations again now for the new values, we get a gradient of minus 22. We get an intercept at 103. We've still got a very, very good correlation there, so it's a very good fit. Our unknown, if we measure it on the small gel, has only moved 29 millimeters. And if we plug that into the equation y equals mxc and solve, what we find is we get a log value of 3.36, and that comes out to 2,331 base pairs, so 2,300 base pairs, which is very, very close to the original value that we had of 2,200. So the size of the gel doesn't really matter in this case. So what's the answer to how do you calculate the distance a band has moved if my agarose gel is on a PDF? Well, the easiest thing to do is just print out the PDF. The size of the image doesn't really matter, but generally the bigger the better. And as long as you've printed it out, made the best use of the space available on the paper and it's all on one sheet, you should be fine. There should really be no issues. You should make the measurements, it could be in millimetres or centimetres or even inches, it doesn't really matter as long as you're using the same units, millimetres, centimetres or inches for all your measurements and you're using it on the same image that you've printed out. So that's not an issue either. And if you're using a computer, you can do the measurements in pixels. You can drag the cursor across and measure it in pixels and again that doesn't matter as long as you don't change the size of the image. So. That's my answer to how do you calculate the distance a band has moved if my agro's gel is on a PDF. You just print it out and measure it and then do the calculations as I described in the original video. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any more questions, please submit them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.